Hello, everyone, and happy Wednesday evening. I'm KNWA and Fox 24 Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff giving you a detailed update on Matthew. Now, while Matthew won't affect us here in northwest Arkansas, you might have loved ones that live in Florida or uh, even on the East Coast, and you're wondering about what is the latest with Matthew, I wanted to give you this extensive update on what we expect Matthew to do. There still is some uncertainty, and so I'm going to give you the very latest. This is going to be way too much information to provide during a newscast. First of all, we're going to start off with the latest imagery, the satellite imagery on Matthew. This is from Nesdis, and you'll notice over the last couple of hours, an eye is beginning to develop. That is not good news as it looks like Matthew is continuing to intensify. We will get that latest update from the Hurricane Center about 10 o'clock uh, Central Daylight Time. So that's a look at the latest infrared satellite imagery. When we look at the water vapor, you can see an explosion of thunderstorm development all around the center of the circulation. Notice how the eye wobbles a little bit back and forth. That is one thing that is going to be a key in determining who's going to be impacted the most with the track of Matthew. Now, if we look at the last 48 hours, you'll see that Matthew was intense when it clipped the western edge of Cuba, uh, should I say, excuse me, the western edge of Haiti and the eastern edge of Cuba, and that was as a Category 4 hurricane. Then the uh, category dropped down to a Category 3, but it looks like it is continuing to intensify just south of the Bahamas. You've got a lot of warm water, very low shear, and so it's almost ideal conditions for Matthew to strengthen. Uh, also, very good outflow with that hurricane. This is a very intense and impressive storm, and it's been a long time since Florida has been impacted by a major landfalling hurricane. Last time was just about a little over 10 years ago in 2005. Our satellite and radar showing this weather system that's continuing to intensify. Rain bands already approaching the east coast of Florida. And as you'll see here, uh, looking at that eye that is starting to pop up. And what do we mean by that? Well, I'll stop that imagery and I'll show you that. Just that little, small, little dark spot. Uh, just to the south of the Bahamas and the open waters, that right there is the eye that is beginning to develop with Matthew. Now there is a lot of uncertainty as to the exact track of Matthew, exactly where it, uh, he's heading. And so this is a look at the potential pass. You know, each computer model gives a little bit of a different location and track of Matthew. And you'll notice that most of them are clustered right across the uh, eastern central coast of Florida, including near Daytona Beach, Cape Canaveral. In fact, Cape Canaveral, according to the la latest Hurricane Center track, uh, is going to be almost taking a direct hit. Then, as a big trough of low pressure moves into our area on Thursday and Friday, which brings us rain Friday morning here in northwest Arkansas in the River Valley, that will bend uh, Matthew off to the northeast and kind of curve it away from uh, the east coast. The question is, how long does it hug the coast? In fact, some computer models saying this is going to go very close to the coastline. If the eye wobbles back and forth, some places might be getting a landfall. And then again, if the center of circulation doesn't cross landfall, we will not have a landfalling hurricane. I think we will see landfall in some locations, but it could remain just offshore with the western eye wall. Notice then how some tracks actually loop this back around and bring it back into Florida. That is a rather improbable situation, but it is a possibility, a slight possibility, as some of the models have been saying that. One of the things that Matthew did earlier on was uh, it kind of wobbled around quite a bit. In fact, you can see on the track, look at all this wobbling as it finally took that northern turn and rode the western edge of a ridge of high pressure. Now it's bending a little bit more towards the northwest. You can see the motion right now moving northwest at about 12 miles an hour. We've got pressure at 962. This is a according to the advisory at 7 o'clock. We'll get another one in about an hour and a half. So the track is showing a Category 4 hurricane as it approaches uh, south of Melbourne as it moves towards Cape Canaveral. In fact, you can see Daytona Beach, Cape Canaveral with 130 mile an hour sustained winds with gusts probably over to 150. That is going to be a major impact on the east coast of the United States. Notice on Saturday it starts to move off to the coast. We have beautiful weather here for the Razorback game. In fact, you won't even know that a hurricane is brewing off the east coast of the United States. Here is that hurricane track, though, as it begins to bend back to the southeast and then possibly makes a recurve all the way back into Florida. Again, we're just going to focus on what happens over the next 42 to 72 hours, 48 to 72 hours. Now, the wind swath, this will show you exactly what Hurricane Matthew will do. As you'll see by tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, 
we already got hurricane force winds approaching north of Miami. Miami at this point does not look to be impacted, also, although some high-resolution uh, computer models are showing Matthew may make it a little bit farther south and track farther west. Again, tra hurricane tracks are highly uncertain, and there is a cone of uncertainty, such as that error cone that you saw on the tropical track. Notice that as it moves into uh, the Cape Canaveral area and Kennedy Space Center, it starts to shrink down a little bit. That's the weakening. I think this is a little overdone on the weakening. As if it remains out to sea, there's very little shear and it could remain a strong hurricane. But a lot of places getting over tropical storm force winds and in several areas getting hurricane force winds. And then probably the biggest threat and the most deadly of hurricanes is the storm surge and flood. And you can see that possible storm surge as uh, the hurricane starts to approach Melbourne, Daytona Beach. You have a uh, storm surge possible of over seven feet in some locations. And that's not just for uh, Daytona Beach. You also got that for Jacksonville. Now, I know you might have some friends and family in Jacksonville. The track of the hurricane will be farther east. And so the farther west you get of the eye, the less the impacts. But there still will be a storm surge as the storm storm approaches from the south and then you've got a major storm surge that's clustered uh, right across it looks like uh, southeastern Georgia in between Jackson and uh, Jacksonville and Charleston so that's obviously a major impact so there's a detailed comprehensive look at the timing along with the impacts that Matthew will bring uh, if you want to follow us Mr. Weather Dan on YouTube which is where you're watching this uh, video right now also on social media meteorologist Dan Scoff at Weather Dan on Twitter and uh, again a big storm going to be impacting a lot of places and there's a lot of trickle down effects not only with economy <laughs> a lot of different things that will be happening you'll probably see college football games canceled, the NASCAR race that's taken place in the Carolinas, all these things will be probably impacted. So uh, keep it here with, the weather, with your weather authority for the latest, not only local, but national weather information.